Hey, my name is James Wilkinson and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the news. It's April the 1st. This is not April Fool's in this video, at least. Maybe you've seen some good stuff on the internet for that. But there's lots gone on this month. I've got tons of things to go through in this video. And really, this has been a very, very interesting month. Um, or this is the old data and what's going to be going forward uh, this month and how that's going to impact us. So as always, if you haven't done already, do subscribe to the channel over there and hit the bell notification. That really, really helps us. We're nearly at 25,000 subscribers now. And smash the like button, tickle the like button. Don't get upset about being asked to do that. Just do it. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. It gets more views on the channel. It makes it worth doing this content. So do that for me right now, please. And share the video. I'm sure you know someone that could benefit from knowing what's happening in today's property market. So let's look at what's going on today in property. There's a lot gone on this month. Uh, and so first and foremost, we have the inflation data, which was OK. It was good. It moved in the right direction, didn't it? Because we had a fairly flat inflation data. We had January at 4%, February at 4%. And this time we went down from 4% down to 3.4%. That's a great shift in the right direction and that's what we want to see. Now the talk is because of the energy cap coming off that we know the next data is going to be even better because energy costs dropped and so what we're looking at is getting very close to that 2% target in April. That's what we want to see. Now here's the thing. What we also know is that probably inflation is going to start increasing again at the end of the year. We've got energy prices looking a little uncertain and that feeds into everything, unfortunately. So we can't say we've completed inflation just yet, but it is a lot more positive. Uh, so that's good. House prices, what happened with those? Well, interestingly, house prices on all three data sources that we use were up around half a percent, which is a good start to the year. Now, why is that? Well, there was a lot of people that sat out the market. So in 2023, house prices were down, not down, uh, transactions, sales volume, sorry, was down around 15 to 20%, which is a big drop. And so the lenders stimulated the market. So in December and January, they dropped interest rates. Remember, at one stage last year, you'd have been lucky to get an interest rate below 6%. There was 6.5%, 7%. Some people were paying 10% interest rates, which is insane. And so interest rates went down. I actually got a buy-to-let rate at 3.99% with the mortgage works uh, earlier this year, which was good. And that got the bystanders, the people that sat on the side, back into the market. In January, we had a record uh, or a big influx, not record, but we had a big influx of buyers into the market. They bought and that's been pushing house prices back up, which is good. Uh, and so that's what we want to see. So house prices up 0.2%. Here's a crazy stat. So two stats here. New builds annually are up 16% and in a month, 8%. 8% up in a month on new builds. Now, why has this happened? Well, a lot of new builds paused. So they had big uncertainty. When the rates are at 6%, things just didn't work for them. Inflation's hit these guys really hard with the cost of materials. And so they just weren't building, right? And, and they stopped. And, and so then there's like, there is a, a number of new builds, but they didn't have lots of excess stock. Then the government and lenders and other people started putting all these schemes in together. The government had uh, the mortgage guarantee scheme. There are lenders like Yorkshire Building Society where you can get a 1% um, deposit. You can do that with uh, our new rent or something like that. I've just done a video on that. Um, go and check that out a couple of days ago uh, where you can get deposits from as low as 1%. You can get interest rates as low as 1% as well. There's all sorts of things going on with new builds, lots of incentives. There isn't lots of new build stock, so that meant prices have shot up, which is really crazy. That is going to lead into house prices data, uh, and it will stop the market, as an average at least, crashing. It doesn't mean older properties might not, but this is keeping the market higher. Next, 
arrears. This one's interesting. So mortgage arrears um, is up significantly, and we want to keep an eye on this, is up 10%. It's at around 1% total. It's not anywhere near as high as 2008. In 2008, in that crash, we were at 3.5% of people in arrears. So we're massively behind that, but it is growing, right? So we've got to keep an eye on that. That means that people are struggling with the higher rates. They are struggling. We're in a recession technically as well. So things are tough for a lot of people. Now, in 2008, it was very different. They did lend money to anybody that had a pulse. Basically, if you had a pulse, you could get money. They had self-cert mortgages, which means you just told the bank how much you earned. They didn't even check, which was insane. You could get a mortgage at 110% of the value of the house, meaning if you bought a house for 100 grand, they'd give you 110,000 pounds because house prices were just going up and up and up. They just thought, yeah, let's do that. Give people money for maintenance and all sorts of things like that. So it was a crazy time. Um, now, not so much. It's a lot stricter. Uh, people have been stress tested at these higher interest rates and where we've got to. But it's something to definitely keep an eye on. Two big things here. Renters Reform Act. Renters uh, Reform it's still being talked about. It's not looking likely that it's going to pass that bill. The Renters Reform Act was all about things like getting rid of Section 21, which is no fault evictions, making landlords have to take um, pets into properties, making tenancy agreements just forever rather than six months or 12 months, just making that you rent a property and the contract is just indefinite uh, and then you'd have to be given notice in order to leave. A lot of people were against it. The Tory backbenchers, who a lot of them are landlords, rebelled against this. And it is still getting hearings, but it's not looking likely that it's going to pass at the moment. And that is a, uh, a big one. That was one of the big things that the Tories promised. Next, a lot of people have watched this content. The leasehold reform is going the same way, um, which is not great and hits... A lot of people, very hard homeowners that have unfair service charges, have crazy high ground rents. Um, those people are being hit very hard. It's not really fair how that's done. Late, uh, Tories promised that this would be abolished at one stage. Uh, then they watered it down and it got watered down more and more and more. We had another hearing on it this week. It's still more watered down. It's not looking likely the same thing is happening. They're getting a lot of pressure from the pension companies who buy freeholds and they're saying if you made this go through the freeholds would become almost worthless and those pensions would lose 40 billion in value so there's so much pressure on the Tories uh, to basically abandon this bill that is what most people think could happen right now there's still a glimmer of hope that this still could pass but you're not going to get ground rent abolished for sure. Uh, and we're not sure what will pass. Labour are saying if they get into power within 100 days, they will abolish leasehold. That will never happen. It is not going to be possible to do that in 100 days. But they might pick up this bill and make it their own and pass some more of this. So that's something to watch at the moment. Um, interest rates. Crazy month. So in December... Uh, interest rates. In December and January, we had a rate war. We had lenders fighting over our business because they lost so much trade in 2023. Then it got busy and rates started to go up. In fact, the rate that they borrow at, the swap rate went up, meaning they passed that on to us. And interest rates went up significantly, um, half a percent with some of them over February and March. Now we're at the end of March, or we're at April now, but at the end of March, actually, that flipped around again. So swap rates, where they borrow the money from, the banks borrow from bigger banks, right? They got a reduction temporarily. Some of those passed it on. Inflation data came out saying inflation's looking much more likely to drop, indicating we're closer to a Bank of England base rate drop than we hope. That means that interest rates have started dropping again. 
Uh, the Mortgage Works gave a buy-to-let rate of 3.79, under 4%. I said that you'd see more lenders doing that. Barclays, Santander and HSBC dropped their rates this week as well. I've made a video on that a couple of days ago, so go and check that out. So interest rates have dropped. My suggestion is if you have a deal expiring anytime soon, fix a rate. <coughs> and then if the interest rate goes up, you're protected. If the interest rate goes down, you can negotiate to get that lowered. That's important. Next, the budget happened. Capital gains was reduced. That was seen as a, a win <coughs> um, for developers and people building properties. So capital gains has been reduced. That means that when you sell a property, the gains that you get taxed on will be slightly lower. Um, that was a little bit of a win for landlords. Um, that they've given because they haven't given much hope to landlords uh, in the last few years. So that was one there. And the other thing that is not great in the budget is serviced accommodation. And so serviced accommodation is when you rent on Airbnb. Now, some landlords do this strategy because you can. it's way more tax efficient, right? So if you rent as a buy-to-let landlord just to a tenant, you have to pay tax on all of the income. Service to accommodation is seen as a business, so you only pay tax on the profits. They're taking that away and they're making it so you get taxed on the turnover like a normal buy-to-let, which means that it's going to be harder for people. Now, that's good in some ways because there'll be less landlords doing it. There'll be less competition. It does mean that Airbnb prices will probably rise, though. So that's all we've got for this month. There's a lot gone on. We've had house prices up. We've had interest rates that have gone down a little bit. We've had inflation that's dropped. We've had all of the leasehold reform, the renters reform stuff pretty much going on hold. I'd love to know what do you feel was the big stuff that happened this month? Have I missed out anything? Do comment below. Let me know your thoughts on any of these topics. Uh, do get involved in this conversation uh, by commenting below. I personally reply to every single comment. Do smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, and check out some more content on my channel, including this video right here.